What's going on guys, Ace here, and today I'm going to show you guys a little world building technique that I use in my videos. Uh, it basically just involves using blurs and um, camera tracking. So it's not too complicated, I'm just going to hop right in and show you guys what I usually do. Um, as you can see, I've got my logo animation here and I added a drop, or not a drop shadow. I'll explain why I don't use drop shadow as I um, walk you through it. And then I've got text back here, it's kind of like a different um, focal point. Um, compared to my logo animation so I'll show you guys how I set this up it's not too complicated so hopefully you guys can um, duplicate it yourselves okay so first thing I'm gonna do with this scene is use a camera tracker so when I add my animation and the text they move with the scene and not um, independently so they don't look just paste it on um, so in order to do that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select my layer and I'm gonna go to my tracker window and if you don't have the tracker window already um, in your workspace, you can go ahead and go to window and then go to tracker right here and it'll bring up the tracker. Let me, oh, I just turned it off. Let me turn it back on now. Um, but yeah, so select your layer, go up to your tracker and click track camera. And then it'll start analyzing the um, clip that you chose. And you just wait for that to finish and then I'll show you where to go from there. Okay, and now that my camera is finished tracking, I can see all these vertices, and if I scrub through the timeline, I can see that they are indeed tracking to our scene. So as the camera wiggles, there's points that are going to follow the motion, and we can parent our text and our logo animation to those points. And a quick tip, um, if you don't like how big the target looks, you can go over here to target size and just turn it down. Um, but yeah, that's just preference, doesn't really matter. I also want you to keep in mind that you want to pick a vertice that is in the scene the entire time. So what I mean by that, you can see these vertices like being added. If you were to pick one that's added later in time and then um, go to the beginning of your scene, your motion wouldn't track where the vertice is not there. So yeah, make sure we pick vertices that are there the entire time. Um, so in order to create our text, we're going to go ahead and right click on one of these vertices and I'm going to pick this one right here. We're going to do our text first. Um, so right click and then click create text and camera. All right, so now as you, let me zoom in here, we've got this text and it's going to move along with the scene because that vertice is moving along perfectly. And we can change the name, I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna just call it realism, okay. And I'm going to move it down about there so just because I moved it, it doesn't mean it's not going to track anymore it's fine um, basically it's just in a different position but it's still moving in the same way that this vertice is moving so let me play this and as you can see it's tracked perfectly and from here we can just get creative I'm gonna change the color of the text from uh, black to white just because I like white it looks really clean to me um, and then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer so control D and then I'm gonna call this one realism shadow. Okay. All right. I'm gonna zoom in some so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing here. And this one, I'm going to turn to black and then I'm going to press R to bring up a rotation and then rotate the X rotation up to like, that's about good. Like 80, 80 degrees there. And then I'm gonna move it right about there. Now you may have realized we've run into a bit of a problem. Our realism shadow is in front of our realism text, which is not good. So what we need to do is um, move our shadow backwards in the Z position. So let's bring up our position here and press P to do that. And then take our Z value and move it to the right to move it backwards. And you can see it move behind, see that behind the text. So now when position in X, Y, it's actually behind it and we get an actual shadow look there so and obviously this isn't perfect but for the tutorial I'm just showing you the method I use to get a scene like this done next I'm gonna go ahead and add a Gaussian blur to our um, realism shadow and I'm going to go ahead and go to effects and type in Gaussian to me yes is Gaussian blur and you, I'm gonna use BCC Gaussian blur but um, the built-in Gaussian blur works fine too um, go ahead and add that on. I'm gonna turn it down to like one. All right, so now I've got a, a blurred shadow. 
Um, next thing we need to do is we need to animate the blur on the white text because if you look and play this through, this doesn't look natural at all because it's deep in space but it's not blurring correctly. So now we need to add Gaussian Blur to our main text. And I'm going to zoom in again here. And I'm going to keyframe the horizontal blur or just the blur amount if you're using Blur and Sharpen Gaussian Blur. I'll press U to bring up the keyframe and then I'm going to press F9 to easy ease it. And I'm going to turn the value down to zero. So let's just position these to about the same time that his feet come into view. There we go. It's about right, actually. I might turn this up just a little bit more. Turn it to like four. And then we're going to do the same thing here with our shadow. We're going to need to animate the um, amount of blur. So let's go ahead and keyframe the horizontal blur. Tap U, F9 to easy ease. This one I'm gonna put right there, and then I'm gonna turn this value up to like um, six, I think, right? So then it's going to blur into view, all right? All right, so let's play this through and see what it looks like. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add my logo animation. I'm gonna blur it the opposite way. So let me go ahead and grab that. Um, there it is, and I need to color key out the black in your color key. Um, Yep, black, turn this up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. All right, um, and I'm gonna need to turn this layer into a 3D layer. And now that it's a 3D layer, if I place it underneath the uh, camera that we created earlier, it should track automatically. I shouldn't need to pair it to a point. So I'm gonna scale this down and position it, you know, right about there. I am making sure also that my animation is a little bit bigger than what the text is. So it kind of creates a little bit more depth because you know the this text is obviously further away so if this was bigger than this it would look weird um just keep that in mind too so let's take a look and see how this tracks and see if it actually tracks like it's supposed to as you can see there the logo animation is tracking because the 3d camera is moving with the scene and since the layer is a 3d layer now it is affected by the camera and it is tracking perfectly um so now i'm just gonna basically duplicate my so now I'm gonna do the same thing with my animation that I did with the text so let's go ahead and duplicate it and I'm gonna call it you know a shadow and then put it underneath so I'm gonna go ahead and position this down and then tap R to bring up the rotation I'm gonna turn it um, about like that should be good right about there what's at negative 70 right about there and then lastly we just need to turn the animation black and blur it so I'm going to use a tint to turn all the whites black and then use Gaussian blur to blur the shadow and the main animation and let's go ahead and add Gaussian blur and I'm gonna turn the shadow blur I'm gonna turn this one up to yeah, like 30. That needs a lot of blur. So 30 is fine there. Next, we need to add it to the main animation. Gaussian blur. And then I'm going to turn it up to... Yeah, 30 as well. And then now we need to keyframe these. So hit the stopwatch. And hit the stopwatch. Tap U. Let's bring back keyframes. F9 to easy ease. So I'm going to go to my other layer to see where the... Um, animation needs to take place so tap U. you can also create markers if you wanted to um, I do that sometimes so in order to create a marker just select off every layer and then hit star it'll create a marker there so you would know um, where to start the animation so here we want the um, blur to be zero for the main animation and then the shadow needs to stay at 32 so I'm just gonna press that button there and then go through the animation and the blur of the shadow I'm gonna bring up to like 45 and the last thing to do is to change the opacity of the shadow I'm gonna go ahead and press T and then change the opacity down to 70% that should be pretty good there let's take a look at our scene and see what we made all right that doesn't look too bad um, the last tip I would give you guys is to parent your shadows to your 
uh, main text just so if you want to move them around you don't have to move both or select both every single time you can just pick whip your shadow to your main um, layer and then you don't you can just move the main layer and then move together so that's pretty much it for this tutorial you can just play around with this sort of technique um, it's really simple but I think it's really really clean and nice to do for certain shots you can add motion graphics you can add you know whatever you can possibly imagine three elements whatever so be creative and leave some suggestions and a like down below and i'll see you guys next week